Hello, so we're talking about the drug amitriptyline and specifically its use when managing neuropathic pain conditions such as canine chiari, syringomyelia and feline hyperesthesia syndrome. Amitriptyline is also used for some behavioural disorders and we're going to briefly mention those but that's outside my specialty and so it will only be a very brief mention. So amitriptyline I would regard as a fourth line agent for management of neuropathic pain. And that means that there'll be at least three drugs that I would choose before selecting for this, dr uh, this drug. And that's really because it's uh, a drug with a lot more adverse effects and needs more monitoring. And so it's a little bit uh, more complicated to give or might result in problems with the animal. So really you would choose easier options like gabapentin and pregabalin and perhaps topiramate first. Of course this video is accompanied by uh, quite a few other YouTube videos and so uh, you may want to be looking at those before viewing this one. So amitriptyline is a tricyclic antidepressant. Uh, what does that mean? It, it means that it has three rings. Two benzene rings that are fused to a central um, a cycloheptine ring and it's this ring structure which confers a lot of its pharmacological action and uh, uh, effect on receptors in the central nervous system. It also has this tertiary amine and that also has uh, a crucial role in its pharmacological action. Now amitriptyline has what I call dirty pharmacology which basically means that it has multiple mechanistic action on neuropathic pains. It does a lot of stuff. This also means that it also can have more side effects because drugs that are, that are less specific are more likely to have adverse effects such as sedation. Um, and if we compare it to a more specific drug such as uh, fluoxetine, which is a specific serotonin reuptake inhibitor, uh, many people know uh, fluoxetine better by its trade name, which is Prozac. Then uh, amitriptyline, which uh, blocking reuptake of serotonin is one of its main uh, mechanisms of action. Uh, it's effective for neuropathic pain much more so than fluoxetine. And it's because of its other actions that it's effective for neuropathic pain, not just on that very specific serotonin action, which makes fluoxetine less effective for uh, neuropathic pain disorders. So it blocks reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. So these uh, are the inhibitory uh, mechanisms of uh, pain. So these um, serotonin and noradrenaline uh, are produced in the brain stem nuclei and then affect the uh, dorsal horn uh, by this descending inhibition. It also affects um, the adrenergic antagonism, so it's another sort of effect on the uh, norepinephrine adrenergic systems. It also modulates dorsal horn neuron voltigated ion channels, so it's having an effect uh, at this level here in the spinal cord. So of course it can be synergistic together. It also modulates the nociceptors, so right out here as a, as a sodium channel blocker. And this makes it quite useful in human medicine because you can have amitriptyline as a topical cream and apply it directly to the painful area. And that topical cream will affect those nociceptors without having so much absorbed systemically so you get less adverse effects. But of course, that's less useful in domestic animals, really, for, for two reasons. The most important is they're hairy, and so applying a topical cream isn't very useful. And secondly, that we don't have so many uh, uh, peripheral neuropathic pain syndromes where we can precisely localise where there are abnormal nociceptors firing and we can apply that cream. And of course, a slightly third uh, option is that uh, uh, a reason not to use it is that the animals will lick the cream and then it won't be topical at all. It will become systemic. The other interesting action of amitriptyline is it stabilizes mast cells via an action on the H1 receptor, uh, antagonizing that. 
And that's why it's useful for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome in, in humans and the equivalent in cats. And so this is meant to represent a degranulating mast cell. Uh, and this is meant to be a very important contributory factor in um, bladder pain syndrome or stress cystitis. And so um, it's uh, uh, often the first line agent for this sort of disorder. Of course, it also has a, a, a central effect reducing anxiety. It's not called an antidepressant for, for no reason. And that can also be very helpful because uh, in a lot of instances, there is an emotional health component to this disease or in fact in all uh, instances. Uh, it could be argued. So uh, amitriptyline is actually considered a first line drug for neuropathic pain in humans. And I put an exclamation mark there because um, we um, uh, wouldn't consider it a first line agent in, in veterinary medicine. And that's partly because there's been no clinical studies for its management of neuropathic pain, MP, in, in veterinary medicine. In, in the dog, there's been one case report plus a lot of anecdotal evidence. So though there's no clinical studies, a lot of people use this drug. And then in the cat, the only reports are actually for the idiopathic stress cystitis. And also there's a few mentions for feline hyperesthesia syndrome, which is a rather enigmatic condition, which uh, is thought to be a pain syndrome, but definitely has uh, a, an emotional health component to it as well. Uh, and, um, and, and, and so this drug can have a double action uh, with that. It can affect the animal's emotional health and can also affect neuropathic pain. This is the dose rate, which you'll see is quite a range. Um, so 0 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram every 12 to 24 hours. And my advice is that you start very low and you titrate up slowly. And that's one of the adverse uh, um, sort of difficulties with this drugs is that um, it takes a while to get to the ideal dose and it requires at least three weeks therapy to assess an effect on neuropathic pain. So this is not a quick trial. This is not just have a few tablets and hopefully this is going to work. It's something that a decision needs to be made to take this drug um, over a long period of time and you titrate up slowly and um, assuming that there's no adverse effects, uh, ascertain the response. And then ideally, you would also withdraw slowly um, to avoid adverse effects. So unlike a drug like gabapentin, where uh, uh, you can ascertain an effect within two to four weeks, this is a, a lot longer plan needs to be had, which is another reason why it tends to me to be a, a, a drug which is given later uh, uh, and fourth line. I find that most cat owners find giving amitriptyline extremely difficult and a lot of dog owners as well because it is a foul tasting drug and uh, if, especially if they bite down on it which is very easy to do if you're a cat then they will profusely salivate and once they've tried it the first time it'll be even more difficult to uh, give that drug. The main adverse effect that you see here is actually sedation. Um, uh, humans on it will often describe feeling like a zombie. Uh, and often if you find a, a human who's been given this as a drug, they're often very reluctant for their animal to have it because they don't want their animal to go through the same effect. But some of the more serious um, uh, adverse effects is that it can cause uh, gastrointestinal signs like nausea and vomiting. Um, there can be hematological effects, even bone marrow suppression, so reduction in production of cells, which means you do need to monitor hematology. And it can affect the ECG, um, making these changes here, widened QRS complexes, prolonged PR intervals, flatten the T waves and even ventricular arrhythmia, which means that you should do a baseline ECG prior to therapy. Um, uh, and we do see some changes. Actually, the significance of this is not known, but I wouldn't like to prescribe this drug without doing that first. And I will take baseline drugs, uh, uh, sorry, baseline blood work, which is hematology, which in America they call that a complete blood count or CBC, uh, serum biochemistry and thyroid function. And I'll check that again one month after initiating. 
and then every six to 12 months. So in summary, amitriptyline um, is not a commonly used drug, but um, because of its so-called dirty pharmacology, it may be useful where other drugs have failed. And um, uh, But when you do try and come to use it, you do need to monitor it. And uh, for some animals, it just won't suit because of its potential adverse effects. Thank you very much.